Who ate Michael Rockefeller? The billionaire disappeared among the cannibals. In the early 1960s, Michael Rockefeller disappeared in Papua New Guinea. It was an event that shocked the whole world. It recently turned out that the true fate of the heir to the standard oil fortune was far more cruel than anyone could have imagined. Michael Rockefeller, the son of Nelson Rockefeller, governor of New York State, was born in 1938. He was the last born in a dynasty of billionaires founded by his great-great-grandfather, John Rockefeller, probably the richest man who ever lived. Although his father expected Michael to follow him and take care of the family business, the young man was a quieter nature with artistic inclinations. When he graduated from Harvard University in 1960, Michael wanted to do something more exciting than conducting meetings in offices. Michael Rockefeller studies cannibals. Fascinated by primitive art, he decided to travel to what was then called Dutch New Guinea and collect art objects created by the people of the Asmat tribe. Michael had already traveled extensively, living in Japan and Venezuela for several months at a time, but now he was planning to embark on an anthropological expedition. By the 1960s, Dutch colonial authorities and missionaries had already been in the area for nearly a decade, but many of the Asmat tribesmen had yet to see white people. Michael formed a group of researchers to accompany him on his journey. Once there, he visited the Oxygenip tribe, one of the largest Asmat communities on the island, where he took photographs and tried unsuccessfully to buy bist poles, intricately carved wooden artifacts, from the locals. However, he was not discouraged. He found that the people of the Asmat tribe seemed to violate many of the norms of Western society. At the time, wars between villages were the order of the day, and Asmat warriors often decapitated their enemies and then ate them. In certain regions, Asmat men practiced homosexuality, but also bizarre masochistic rituals during which they drank each other's urine. It is a wilder and more isolated country than anything I have ever seen, wrote Michael Rockefeller in his diary. With very limited contact with the outside world, the Asmat tribe believed that the lands beyond the island were inhabited by spirits, and when the white men arrived by sea, the natives looked upon them as supernatural beings. After this initial mission, Michael was thrilled. He made plans to make a detailed anthropological study of the Asmat natives and to organize an exhibition of art objects created by them. He went to New Guinea again in 1961 with a team of Dutch anthropologists. The Cruel Fate of Michael Rockefeller Due to a storm, the boat overturned near the shore. Although they were 12 miles from shore, Rockefeller reportedly told an anthropologist on the expedition, I think I can make it to shore, and then let himself go. He was never seen again. Since Michael Rockefeller was part of a wealthy family and close to political circles, huge resources were invested in the search operation. Ships, planes, and helicopters combed the region, searching for Michael and any clues to his fate. Nelson Rockefeller and his wife flew to Papua New Guinea to assist in search operations. Although the Rockefellers had some hope that they would eventually find their son, they left the island that same day. Two weeks later, the Dutch called off the search and Michael was declared dead. Official cause of death, drowning. The death of Michael Rockefeller made a sensation in the press of the time. In a short time, newspapers began to speculate about his fate. Some claimed that the young man had been eaten by cannibals, others attributed the tragedy to sharks. The sinister truth is revealed. In 2014, Carl Hoffman, a National Geographic reporter, advanced the hypothesis that Asmat natives killed Michael Rockefeller. Two Dutch missionaries who had been on the island, who had lived for years among the Asmat community and who spoke their language, told the local authorities that the natives had told them that some of them had killed Michael Rockefeller. The following year, the police officers sent to investigate the case came to the same conclusion and even came into possession of a skull that the natives claimed was Michael's. In 1962, the Dutch had already lost half of their territory in Papua New Guinea to the new state of Indonesia, and they feared that if the world believed that they could not keep the native population in check, they would quickly lose their last possessions. Carl Hoffman concluded that Michael's killing was revenge. Here's why. In 1957, a massacre took place between the Asmat Ochgenep and Omatisep tribes, resulting in dozens of victims. 
The Dutch colonial government sent gunmen to the scene, who opened fire, killing four Jews, warlords. The white man must die. According to the Dutch missionary who first heard the story, the natives spotted Michael swimming ashore after the shipwreck and thought it was a crocodile or some other animal. Only then did they identify him as a twan, that is, a white man. Unfortunately for Michael, the people he met were Jews and descendants of those killed by the Dutch. One of them seems to have said, Ochtenep's tribe, you always talk about twan hunting. Well, this is your chance. Although hesitant at first, mainly due to fear, the natives speared him and killed him. Then, they decapitated him and ate his brain in a victory ritual. Finally, they cooked and ate the rest of the body. They turned thigh bones into daggers and shins into fishing gear. His blood was collected and the tribesmen used it during ritual dances. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. In their religious system, they believed they were restoring balance to the world. The white man's tribe had killed four of their own kind, and now it was necessary to pay according to the laws of nature and absorb the power that had been stolen from them. Soon, however, they would regret this decision. The search that followed the murder of Michael Rockefeller was a nightmare for the Azmit tribe. Most of the natives had never seen an airplane or a helicopter. Immediately after this incident, the region was swept by a terrible cholera epidemic. The Azmit natives saw it as a sign of revenge from the spirits for killing Michael. Although many locals told the same story to Hoffman, none related to the killers admitted to the deed, claiming only that it was a hearsay.